This is Six Tackles with Gus, with Matthew Thompson and Gus Gould. Welcome along to episode two of Six Tackles with Gus for 2024. Great to have you with us. Great to kick off the podcast last week. Everyone, very pleased that we're back. That was the feedback. Well, most of it anyway. Uh, On the show today, the teams for Vegas are in. Broncos versus Roosters. 3.30 kickoff. Live and free here on Nine and Manly versus Souths also in action. Wigan prevails in a controversial World Club Challenge. Part two of our season preview and it will ask Gus as well. Welcome. Matthew Thompson, how are you doing? Excellent. We're all in blue today. It's almost like the Bulldogs have infiltrated our dress code. From those watching us on the screen there, yeah. I've got to keep remembering we're on camera. <laughs> I forget sometimes. Uh, where are you off to a, a function today? Yes, I've got the uh, 1988... Bulldogs, uh, who won the premiership in 1988, having a reunion down at the Woolloomooloo Hotel, Arthur Laundy's Laundy's Hotel. Um, it started out with um, Paul Langmack. has got a little WhatsApp group with a few of the former players, and uh, there's only four or five of them, and uh, they invited me in to ask me a question about something which I answered, and that got on to something else, got on to something else, and he said, we should all have lunch together mm. before the season starts. I said, yeah, good as gold. I said, I'll book it in at one of Arthur Laundy's hotels, I said, I'll see you at your lunch. Um, and that got on to, well, we should invite so-and-so and so-and-so. We should invite so-and-so. So now it's ended up a 1988 reunion. We've got 28 coming. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, um, which is very much like they were back in the day. I can remember back in the day, they were a really tight-knit group. They were a young group. Um, the 88 side probably wasn't expected to win the premiership at the start of the season, but um, they had a great year. And at the end of the year... Bulldogs, when you won the comp, they used to take you on a trip away. They used to take you to Hawaii. I remember when we won it in 84, we went to New Orleans and Los Angeles and Hawaii, a massive trip, one of the trip of a lifetime. So in 1988, it was a usual thing. Um, we'll shout you a trip to Hawaii for winning the premiership. On the way, though, we're going to Auckland to play Auckland in a $20,000 <laughs> winner-take-all game. So we, we, we took 17 players to Auckland to play in this game, which we won a week later. Uh, I don't know how we won, but we won. But they were such a tight-knit group and they didn't want the other blokes who'd sort of played first grade during the year or some of the reserve graders and all that to miss out. Mm. So we had we had a bit of money. We had a punters club and we'd won a bit of money during the year and we had this 20000 that we'd won from winning this game in Auckland, which Bullfrog said we could have. And so we told the other blokes to meet us in Hawaii. Huh. If they could get there, we'd have the spending money for them to get. So they ran a real rebel tour. So they all turned. So we had about 35 in Hawaii. Oh. And uh, it, again, it was a magic trip. Uh, great memories. That they were the they were the things that really. But they were a tight knit group. And um, I remember at the time we often talked about you know what we were doing at the time and how special it could be if we could go on and achieve the greatness of winning a premiership. But not so much for now. But how you would remember that for the rest of your life. How you would look back upon that. And in twenty years' time, you're still all going to be mates and uh, still all going to be. Uh, communicating and um, and they have been so here we are 36 years later a few phone calls they've, they've gone and found all the old staff all the old dressing room staff and all the old trainers and um and all the players that we can um the, the only player that won't get there is the late Stephen folks so we'll have a drink for him as well and mm. um yeah so it should be a great day at the laundry hotels no doubt tomorrow we'll be in the papers with some alcohol related incident i wouldn't have thought so i'm just so glad they didn't have phones and cameras back in the days when we had those trips away that's all Jason Alchin, Glenn Nissen, Tony Curry, Andrew Farrer, Robin Thorne, Terry Lamb, Michael Hagen, Paul Dunn, this is when 13 was prop, yep. 12 was hooker, Joe Thomas, Peter Tunks, David Gillespie, Steve Fakes, Paul, jeez, it's a hell of a pack. Yep. Uh, Paul Langmack, then Mark Bugden, Brandon Lee, Steve Morton on the bench, Darren McCarthy. A bit of early six-tackle trivia. Who won the Clive Churchill medal? That year? I think I think it went to, uh, I, don't, I don't know if there was one, but I think the man of the match... No, it wasn't. They didn't have it back in those days. No, they did. Did they? Well, oh, Paul, oh, Paul Dunn. Paul Dunn. Paul Dunn. Now, that was, it's been retrospectively awarded in some instances, hasn't it? Paul the Clive Dunn. Churchill medal. Paul Dunn, yes. No, Paul Dunn got the man of the match. I don't know if was it the Clive Churchill medal, uh, medal back then. Yeah, let me just. I, I Now you mention that, I think it's been retrospectively awarded. So Paul Dunn was man of the match and subsequently has been given the Clive Churchill medal. So there yeah. you go. Um First year was 86, so yes, he did win it. Okay. Sterlow won the first. Did he? Yep. Yeah. Gee, you beat a handy Balmain team just quietly. They were a good side. <laughs> Coached by Warren Ryan. Oh, they're, yeah. They were a good side. 
Very yeah. good side. Oh, that'll be great. Um, my question to you is, however, where's your hat? My hat? Aren't you going to wear your hat? Well, I, I didn't think I'd wear it on the podcast. I can't put it over my ear, headphones. Are you going to wear it out today? No. Oh, you got to wear it out. If you haven't seen Gus's hat, go on Twitter. <laughs> His wife unsolicited bought him a hat. It looks like it's come direct from Cuba. Well, when when we were in Hawaii, she kept saying to me, she, I want to, want to buy you one of these hats. I'm saying, get away. I'm not wearing one of those hats. And she kept going into these hats. So I said, what's this about a hat? Why are you trying to buy me a hat? Anyway, I came home the other day and there it was. She, <laughs> she'd gone out and bought it. I like it. Hey? I like it. Where am I going to wear it? Well, today you're going to the Woolloomooloo Hotel. It looks like something out of the 1930s. You look like Alphonse Gantitano. Are, they back, in, are they back in fashion, are they? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could wear it to the races, couldn't you? <laughs> I, got a, I got a text message off Lee Hadjapentalis. You know, the oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, welcome to the club. Because <laughs> Lee's always walking around in a fedora, yeah. I think. Oh, that's right. I couldn't afford one of I these hats. No, I don't think yours is worth quite as much as his. No. Yeah. He you, said, you, welcome you, to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Should I wear it to the footy? This I'll wear it to the footy. Yeah. I might do it in commentary. You should. Well, it's got to be kept, your thing. They kept sending me pictures of Ian Chapel and Tony Gregg wearing them. <laughs> Richie? <laughs> Richie Bell. They were all wearing them. Well, it's see, it can become your, your your trademark. Peter Fitzsimons has got his red bandana. Oh, please. <laughs> you, can have, you can have your hat. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> no. Oh, it's good. I like no. it. I like it. There was a famous NFL coach in America who used to wear a hat. What was it? At the, um, who do you have? I can't remember. Dallas Cowboys or someone. Hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, the hat. <laughs> I'll, I'll, it'll be funny the first day I wear it out. I'll wear it to the races. If I got a horse racing, I'll wear it to the races. Yeah, yeah, that'll. Cool, old, old blacks wear hats to the races. Yeah, well, a lot of the trainers wear them, don't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I. I'm getting in that category now. I'm quite old. No. Well, you're not thinning. She's not trying to cover up your lack of hair. You're sweet up there. I don't know why she's done it. She's I think obvi- she wants to go to Cuba on holiday. Well, I think she's obviously embarrassed to walk the streets with me, but no, I don't know why she <laughs> bought me a hat. I love it. Yeah, we're in a wire. She kept walking into hat stores. I said, what are you doing? She said, I want to buy one. I said, get out. I wouldn't wear one of those. I played uh, golf with a colleague of ours yesterday. He's got a cap, uh, a master's cap, direct from Augusta. Who? Ronnie. Ronnie <laughs> Castorina. Really? Yeah. That would be the trip. Oh, yeah. I'd love that, that. That would be one thing I'd love to do. Go to the Masters. Well, we've got the rights. We should send you as our roving reporter. Yeah. Um, Broncos won the preseason challenge, Gus. Hundred thousand they get. Yeah. Hundred thousand. <laughs> Just as well they need it. <laughs> yeah, they need the money. Um, I thought Lachlan. One of the fines might have been that Lachlan Galvin from the West Tigers. In the trials, in the, yeah, yeah, he's he a good, played eighty, he, pretty much eighty minutes. He came on playing the centres. He's a great kid. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been on the horizon for some time. He's a yeah, he's an NRL player. Um, At 18, 18 now, years yeah, of age, yeah. and he's still a bit slight. You know, they'll they'll have to look after him for a while, but uh, he'll force his way into the NRL sooner rather than later. He yeah. was he was quite impressive the other night. Even though the Tigers weren't that good, he was uh, he did some really nice things for one so young. Yeah, he just got a. Protect them from themselves a little bit. He's got no fear, um, and you know he's got to, kids like that. You got to protect from themselves. Uh, but he's a, a shining light on the horizon, no doubt about that. Well, they're saying he might force his way in for round one. I, I, I think he'll be. I think he'll be representative class down the track. Oh, there you go. Big rap from Gus Lachlan Galvin. So there's a bit to to like about the Tigers. Let's start with yes or no. Yes. No. No, 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 dear, oh, dear, We missed this news, I reckon, by about two minutes last week. We left here and Stacey Jones was given the job as New Zealand's uh, test coach. She's the correct choice, is my question. Well, yeah, you could have you could have chosen anyone. Stacey's uh, very well entrenched in the Warriors Club, Um when I did my little bit of time there consulting, he was working in the pathways back in New Zealand. He couldn't come to Australia because of the COVID restrictions. And the one, couple of times that I got over there trying to set up their pathways programs and academy programs, Stacey was in charge of all of that. Uh, and he was very keen to get back into NRL coaching. And I think there was, might have been an interim role there after I left. David. I think he did. Yeah, he took Stephen Kearney uh, when he left, didn't he? Nathan Brown, I Nathan think. Brown. Well, Nathan I, I, Brown. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown, yeah. Nathan Brown stepped aside and... And he came in to, to assist Stacey. He's, he's um, a real footballer. He has a real footballer's mentality to the way he coaches his team. I think he's been doing a little bit of the attacking football there and probably gets on really well with Sean Johnson. And knowing all the kids that are coming through the system and looking towards the future, 
are now being in the Warriors Pathway Program. The, the key to the Warriors Pathway Program was to get them back in the junior rep competitions over here and get them back in the New South Wales Cup over here. Um, because of costs and because of COVID, they dropped out of those competitions. You can't develop um, those kids from New Zealand or offer them a pathway through to the NRL without that. So um, we were able to negotiate some funding with the NRL to, to make sure they were in the Matthews, SG Ball and Jersey Flag competitions and the New South Wales competitions, which they're well established. They're going well. They've got a heap of kids there in New Zealand looking to, to make it into professional football. And Stacey Jones is, um, well, he's an icon in New Zealand, and r rightly so, one of the mm. great halfbacks of all time. And he'll be very passionate about it. And I'm sure he'll have plenty of people around him to help as mm. well. So um, an inspired choice, I would say. You talk to the immortal Andrew Johns about the great halfbacks he played against in his time, mm. and he has Stacey Jones right up there. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Good luck, Stacey. He's taken over a reasonable team. <laughs> well, they just vlog Australia. And... <laughs> the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, in a recent series in the Sydney Morning Herald and the other nine newspapers around the country and Wide World of Sports, they embarked on an exercise to rank the NRL's top 50 players. There was a panel, a steam panel put together. Nathan Cleary was number one. This is the correct choice. Well, I don't think anyone would argue with it, mm. um, particularly with what's fresh in recent memory of the grand final last year and what he's done. I mean, he's he's had an extraordinary career. Nathan broke into first grade at 18 years of age and uh, not many young halves can do that and have an immediate impact. I think he was the first player to score 200 points in a season, uh, the youngest player to ever score 200 points in a season. He adapted to it like he'd been there his whole life. You know, the first few years were very, very tough for him. But he got through that. He ended up playing representative football. He's now the Australian uh, halfback. I think that um, he's probably the biggest influencer of results um, and now seen as one of the great leaders in the game. And I've raised this point a number of times. Our top playmakers in the game, the best of our playmakers in the game, are all probably 32 years of age and older. Nathan Cleary is still 26, not 27 till November this year. He's got another six years before he gets to their current age, mm. let alone what he plays after that. He's going to break all records. I've said this all along. He will break all point-scoring records in the NRL by the time he's finished. Yes, he's got it all before him. Um, just a little sidelight. Um, Murray, who uh, looks after a, a number of our shows around, he popped in just before we, we started our podcast and said the Panthers flying back from the World Club Challenge. They stop in Dubai or somewhere in the Emirates, and they – they were given six um, business class or maybe first class seats extra, so upgraded. So in order to distribute them fairly, there was hats, you know, names in the hat. The first one that came out was Maverick Geyer <laughs> into first class. <laughs> He's gone for the trip. He's flying back first class, didn't even play. That'll be the Geyer for good fortune. <laughs> The guy a good fortune. If you like how good is this? <laughs> the guy a good fortune. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so the panel that put this together, Andrew Johns, Darren Lockyer, Brad Fittler, Alana Ferguson, Emma Lawrence, Danica Mason, Roy Masters, Andrew Webster, Michael Chambers, and Adam Pym Gilly. So uh, people with our organisation that, uh, that offer a wide representation. Do you want me to give you the top ten? Sean Johnson, mm -hmm. Pat Carrigan. Mm -hmm. This is ten downwards. Uh, James Fisher-Harris. Cam Murray, Cameron Munster, Harry Grant, Reese Walsh, Payne Haas, Caelan Ponga, Nathan Cleary. Uh, it's amazing how many middle forwards they've now got in the top 10, how yeah. influential they are. Um, and particularly, you've got a, a, a couple of those sort of lock forward types there. And then obviously, your Cleary and your Munster um, and your Sean Johnson, who are influential playmakers. It's hard for any other position to get a look in, isn't it? Mm. Um, but Front rowers, you know, your Payne Harses and James Fisher Harris, those sort of players. Uh, Cameron Murray is a lock forward. Um, yeah, they've, they've become very influential in the game. For our listeners in Vegas, always have a peanut on 13 black at the roulette wheel. No, 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 no. No. Huh? Why, why 13 black? Lucky number 13. I always have something on 13 black. Do you? Yeah. How's it worked out for you? <laughs> Not great. So now you're tipping everyone into you. No, I'm just, that was my, yeah, I'm asking fair. you. You said no. Gamble response. Have you got a lucky number in, on roulette? No. That's not your go-to if you ever go and have a flutter no. at the casino? I haven't. You're a blackjack I haven't, man? I, I'm not, I wasn't really, you know, I, I would go to the casino with mates and have a drink and have a few bets and all that sort of thing. But I, I never, I don't like the card games. I, you know, I, I got bored 
with the card games. I thought you'd be a card counter. Table games. I didn't mind. Um, uh, uh, I didn't mind playing the roulette, but I yeah, I was a bit random with that. Um, What's the one with the dice? Um, craps. Back, back and around or cr- craps? Is it craps or I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't really take interest in table games. All right. Well, that question didn't elicit the response I was hoping. Um, we're at the NRL. Both the ref and the video ref would be fired after their performance in the World Club Challenge. <laughs> No, no, no. The NRL don't fire anyone. (laughs) Oh, you change your mind. They don't fire anyone. (laughs) Well, they would have spent a week in reserve. Should they be fired? (laughs) Should they be fired? Ah, it was a bit. Hit the button. Hit the button. (laughs) What was doing? What about the Liam Martin strip? That was the worst one. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you're going to get a bit of that. A bit of it? (laughs) When you get. Look, you are. And, you know, there was a couple of forward passes for a try, but. I've seen that in test series over the over the decades, you know, going back in time and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, there's always a little bit of hometown bias. We experienced it ourselves. You're talking about in, the French bloke last <laughs> 1991, week. we experienced a bit of that ourselves. But, you know, I, I think um, just just to, to look at the performances, I mean, obviously the Panthers have been the number one team in our country for the last three years, and it's unfortunate they haven't worn this World Club Champions tag. They had a great chance to do it at home against St Helens last year and, and got beaten by a point, spilled their lollies a little bit. I would have thought they'd got it right this time. They didn't, and it's not as though they played badly, um, but it, it just must be very difficult. The, these English teams just seem to be able to get up for these one-off performances and they're at home under those conditions and any of the 50-50s that sort of there, um, you know, seem to fall their way a little bit. And I know it's uh, the anger of the of the. Panthers fans, and they'll be very, very disappointed. Panthers were very, very lucky about the Bevan French, uh, French try, the brilliant try from the scrum base where they kicked downfield on tackle zero, and he got mm. there. He was only a half a yard in front. I mean, um, it was only a, a, a leg in front. It wasn't that much at all, you know, so that could have easily wrapped it up for them. But on the decisions that you're talking about, the try and the no try, um, so on this one, he rules try because – and on this one, he rules no try. Had he ruled no try and try, those decisions would have stood because what, yeah, the, right. what the video bunker said, well, I've got no reason to overrule the referee. I thought the last decision was right by the letter of the law. I don't think you could say the ball was on the ground, the Penrith one. No, but if, he, if the referee had have said it was a try, That's they right. wouldn't have overruled it. That's right. Yeah, so in, in all probability, he could easily have scored. I, I want to know where the referee was at the time and how he determined no try and where the referee was on this one and how he determined try. So he's, he's called that one a try mm. and that one a no try, I would say, with no vision of either. So what made him go try and no try? Don't know. Well, why, why, are those, why, why do they discern between those? So I, that, you yeah, know, and that, and that, the same thing that club games and, here. And that left the video referee no choice. Yeah, yeah. You know. Having said that, you know, Wigan were terrific. Like, <laughs> Wigan were terrific. I looked at their team and I thought, well, they were for man, they wouldn't have a chance. They wouldn't beat Penrith. <laughs> They, they, they wouldn't be, but they did, and they held Penrith to nil in the second half, uh, which yeah. we've got no teams over here that have been able to do that. Penrith had won 73 of their past 74 games when they led at half time. Yes. And Wigan were able to turn, overturn that. Penrith got to the front twice in the game, and they came back twice. Mm. Very few sides have been able to do that. So, you know, whilst there were a couple of decisions there that could have turned the result, I don't think that should take away from Wigan's performance, which was outstanding, you know, great spirit, a great coaching performance. They found a little weakness in the Panthers' left-hand defence there. Remember, Panthers had no Jerome Luai, no Stephen Crichton, and no Spencer Lemieux, who won the premiership with them last year. And they're pretty three pretty influential players. And they had a few players there that, um, um, even inexperienced at the NRL level, let alone going to England in front of the full crowd there and on that sort of playing surface and playing there. So... Um, yeah, look, the refereeing wasn't great, but uh, I don't think you can take anything away from Wigan and the effort that they put in to win that game. Mm. And I, I don't, you know, I, you know, I know the Panther fans are blowing up. I don't think any of the Panther players would be blowing up too much. Nah. Yeah, you know, I think they had their chance. You don't remember the World Club champion, is do you? Well, really? it's 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 more important for English rugby league than it is for us. I think it's something that they really look forward to and, and they've got a great record at. I think it's now 16 to 14 English clubs over the Australian clubs. Um, but Better than none and five. Four. None and, none four. and four, is it? Yeah, I think they've had four. I don't think they would have played in the COVID Two. year, the first year. 
Oh, right, yes. So, um, yeah, then it's been proven. It's not easy for the Australian sides to win that game. England seem to be able to lift for it. How much do you reckon, just looking at the field, it, it's slippery as, and what about the short in goals? Does that yeah, influence? It does. It does. Influence? Like the first, the first six or seven sets of six that Penrith completed, they never kicked. Yeah. They were petrified about giving away seven tackle sets. Um, and when, when you say it's a slippery surface, it's a different sort of slippery. It's a different sort of slippery to what we experience over here. What you would have seen over there is skid marks. Yes. It's quite firm underneath, but quite, uh. quite slippery on top. And it's cold, like it's two or three degrees over there at the time, you know, in, those, yeah. in that game. So it's, it's a very different sort of, um, it's a very different sort of cold. It's a different sort of environment. And the playing surface is actually firm, but skiddy, mm. you know, and it's moving the ball isn't as quick. And, and what, what I think Panthers did was they probably went into it with a conservative mindset. You know, we've just got to control the ball on this slippery surface until we get the use of it, where England didn't. Mm. Now, Bevan French was throwing cutout passes to the winger and, you know, they were, they were moving the ball around a little bit. So it was kind of like, oh, well, okay, well, you can play some football with it. And, you know, Penrith never really got around to playing good football. Oh, well, they controlled it well, but Wigan yeah. stood up to them. I, I, you know, you can't take anything away from Wigan. They were terrific. Now, Bevan, the, the result could have gone either way. Yeah. But Wigan were terrific. You've got to give them kudos for that. Bevan French, Gus. Now, and now he, he was a young talent out here mm. and was primarily a winger. Played a little bit of fullback. Now, I'd, I've never seen him play in a ball-playing role like that. Um, and a couple of times leading into seasons, you've you've seen headlines, oh, Bevan French is sort of on the radar. Has he ever seriously been wanting to come back? And it, after he's turned in a performance like that, playing at 5'8", there'd be clubs that'd be falling over to get him here, wouldn't there? I remember throughout, throughout my history in the game, um, every now and then managers and talent scouts and player managers run off to a carnival. And they'll come back in glowing praise about someone. You know, there's a young kid here. He's, this kid's going to be a superstar. And there have been a number of them over the years, and I can pretty much remember them all. But I remember this one year, they all came back raving about this Bevan French, mm. who was electric. I think he might have been playing fullback at the time up in the schoolboy carnival or wherever it was. And he was phenomenal. And um, his mother was getting – he come from Tinga or somewhere up that way? Uh, I was up, I you, think he is, yeah. Yeah, so An amazing uh, producing town. His mum, you know, and this happens to a lot of parents who, particularly, who haven't had people involved in in professional sport before. Player managers from everywhere wanting to manage this this Bevan French and clubs ringing up trying to get hold of this Bevan French. And I actually rang her. I was at Panthers at the time, and I rang. I said, "Look, I said I don't want to pester you about your son. I said I just wanted to check that you're all right with all these inquiries and all that sort of thing." And she was quite flustered. She really didn't. And I said, you know, if you're looking for a player manager, these are the ones I'd sort of recommend, you know, as, as good, experienced people in the game. And I think Alan Ganey ended up managing him, um, and he came down to Parramatta. Probably got rushed a little bit and then didn't get to play his preferred position, and he wasn't overly big as a kid. No, he wasn't. Um, so I think he sort of fell out, fell out of confidence more than anything, a little bit of self-belief, and... All of a sudden, his contract value had escalated beyond what he was producing, which happens to a lot of young players at times. So the option was to take him to England, where he has been outstanding. He's been one of the best players in the in the UK Super League across there. And to think now that he's running the football team from five eight and doing what he's doing, and you know, picking apart the the premier defence in the competition was quite impressive. So he's twenty eight, Gus. Like he's still got his yeah. And did you hear him interviewed after the game? No, I didn't. He was he was brilliant. He said this means so much to the people of Wigan. He said we in Australia don't we probably don't covet this trophy as much as what they do in England. He said I was more excited for our players how excited they were about this week. The whole Wigan town. Wigan got a proud history in the competition, and Wigan are a very very strong club and a big club. And he he was wrapped for them, and they kept saying, "Yeah, but what's it mean to you?" He said, "Well." I'm, I'm more happy for my teammates in the club, he said, because I know how much this means to, to them and the fans here today. He was really, it was selfless, absolutely mm. selfless, his comments, and he was so excited for his club and his team. And, and I'm quite sure he'd love to be back in the NRL. I'm quite sure he'd love to be back playing in Australia, but he, he's got a home there for another 10 years, like he'll play forever. Yeah, yeah. but after what he did the other day, like, was their coaches going over here? Well, I, I don't know. Well, you'd, you'd imagine so, wouldn't you? Well, there, there, there might hub, there might be like opportunities. There might be, yeah, there might be opportunities. Yeah, there, there's plenty of players that have gone to England that kind of weren't making it here, and gone over there and excelled, which is why we tend to look at their competition and probably underestimate it a little bit. You know, 
there have been some great English forwards come out and play in the NRL and done brilliantly. Not yeah. many backs, though. Not many backs, yeah. not many playmakers. Right? There were a couple early on. But um, but we, we, where we tend to judge it is that a lot of players that are struggling here go there and do extremely well. Right? So we, we kind of gauge it on that. But it just could be a confidence thing and it could be an acclimatise. That could be a brand of football, could be part of the rules or what have you. I don't know. It's pretty intense over here. The, the scrutiny here is mm. pretty intense. Yeah, I remember Tim Sheen said to me, he said, it's football like it used to be. He loved England because there was less pressure, less less scrutiny, less you know, media comment, less all that sort of thing. It's kind Betty, of... <laughs> Betty, Betty, Betty wish he stayed there. Sheen. Look, it's, it's, it's pretty... Look, it's very intense over here. Very what? intense. You people in the media make it very oh, hard for go. these kiddies. Episode two. Yeah. Uh, Tinger, by the way, now... This is, I don't know, Andrew Johns talks a lot about this. Um, at the 2021 census, the population of Tinger was 833. Right. Nathan Blacklock, Preston Campbell, Owen Craigie and Bevan French have mm. all come from Tinger. Tinger. Like, that is, it's just amazing. Yeah. Less than a 1,000 people and they've produced that calibre of a sports person. Yeah. Well done, Bevan French. Well There'll be done. more up there. It's it's only about oh, opportunity yeah. for kids in the bush. It's about opportunity um, and getting into a program and, and just getting the training at the teenage years. It, it, it's very intense now, the NRL. And the, the journey to become an NRL player is very intense. It's it's a lot of pressure on these kids. I try to alleviate as much pressure as possible, but, you know, the funnel narrows very, very quickly and, you know, everyone's looking for the biggest and the strongest and the fastest, obviously, but... Uh, I've got no doubt there are still some that slipped through the track cracks because they didn't get in the right system or they didn't get the right opportunity at the right time or were probably immature at a time when people needed to make rush decisions. Um, yeah, it's the, there are there are I'm I'm sure there are plenty that slip through the track the cracks. All right, on the subject of uh, footballers coming from the UK to the NRL. Our first team to have a look at in part two of our season preview is Newcastle, and they've signed a couple of them. They have. A couple Kai of promising young players. Pierce Paul from yep. Wigan and Will Price. Yep. And I like I like the others. Jed Cartwright, Jack Cogger, Tom Jenkins. Yep. They've lost a few, of course. Uh, New Brown uh, off to Hull. Um, Lachlan Fitzgibbon's gone to Warrington. Heimel Hunt released. Jack John's released. Oren Keeley. To the Dolphins, Kurt Mann's gone to Canterbury, Lockie Miller's gone to England, Simi Sasangi, we saw him run around for Canberra in the trials, and of course Dom Young, um, the big loss probably amongst those to the Roosters. What can you tell us about the two English players that the Knights have picked up? Kai Pierce-Paul, really nice tall lad. Um, so, um, the film that I saw of him over here was playing at academy level or playing rugby a little bit. Um, he played a bit of both coming through, but certainly at the rugby league academy level, he mixed up between centre and edge back row. Uh, he's big, tall thing. Got a really good running style. He's got a good offload, big long levers. Um, whether or not he's going to adapt to the NRL immediately, I think was questionable. Uh, he will certainly get there in time, but being a, I think he's going to graduate to being a forward. They may play him in the centres a little bit uh, early on because he's still got his speed. He's a talented kid. Uh, I think he will, of the two of them, take a little bit longer. Uh, where young Price, Will Price, uh, again, he's young. He's played a bit of fullback and 5'8 over there in the NL, in the uh, UK Super League. Very skillful, very fast. His father was a great player. Leon. Uh, Leon Price was a wonderful player. Uh, I was always disappointed Leon never never came to the NRL. I would have liked to have seen how he went, but he was a, he was a great forward. But uh, I think they're both destined to play plenty of NRL. Uh, they've paid good money for them. Um, and whether or not I, I just think Kai Pierce Paul will take a little bit of time. Um, will Price will depending where they play Will Price because I'm, I'm wondering where he's going to get a start. It's a uh, strong back line. It's a strong back line. Um, yeah. So, but they're both very very talented lads. It was a it was a gamble probably at the time by Newcastle, and then as they went on last year and with the, the quality of player that they got and um. You know, it's 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 given them depth. I'm just wondering whether these two will be regulars in the 17 or not. Will Price can be a regular 17. Uh, Kai Pierce Paul, uh, he might, but I, I think personally, I think he'll take a little bit of time. Okay, 
So Gus, and the other ones they've bought are well too. I mean, Jack Cogger played with the Panthers last year. Jed Cartwright's a Panther Rabbitoh, and I always said Jed would be a late maturer, um, and and he will be a big tall lad. Um, and Thomas Jenkins has performed very, very well for the Panthers in the lower grades in the outside backs. He's played a few first grade games out there and and looked at home. A lot of those Panther kids have got to move on because they've got great players in front of them, so their their pathway's a little bit blocked. But um, you know, I think they've bought really well. Last year, their season took off sort of halfway through the year. They put out a really strong back half of the season, wonderful semi final, um, big win up there against the Raiders, and then they went across to New Zealand, and New Zealand did the same to them, but. Um, they would get a lot of confidence out of that. Caelan Pong is the key. Bradman Best you know, probably had his breakout season, I thought, played origin football. They've got big forwards. and Yeah, look, they're, they're a very competent football team. I've, you said last week as we were departing the building that they're one of your certainties for the eight. You can't, well, I, th- I think they'll make the eight. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Okay, what, what, how far can they go if, if, if they jump on the Ponga train? He won the Daly M on the back of what he did at the second half of last year. Yeah, well, I mean, he's capable of doing anything for them. If they get into the right part of the draw and they get into the right part of the final series and he happens to be in blistering form and some of the others, you know, all this is dependent on everyone, whether they're at full strength or not come September. But if Newcastle are at full strength and he's in form, he's the type of player, I think, that can have one of those Jared Hayne moments, you know, where he, he he launches them towards a grand final. You know, he's he's very capable of that. Um, you know, and it was for him, I mean, leading into that the twelve months prior, he'd had concussions and moved to five eight and yeah. he was having trouble with defensive techniques and taking a break away from the game and, you know, everyone started to get a bit concerned about him. But he's come out of the back end of that and been really good, really confident. Um I see he wants to play Origin again this year. It'll be interesting to see what they do with him and Reese Walsh for, for the Queensland side. Maybe Michael McGuire can borrow one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, they're. Um, I, I think Newcastle are a certainty for the eight. Um, premiership, well, that would depend on when they get there, Carlin Ponga. So you've said Penrith and Brisbane still the dominant force. Would you? Ha- you'd have Newcastle in that little group just below. Yeah. With. The, the possibility that if Ponga gets set on fire, anything could happen. He he's he could catch fire. He could catch fire and do something. I mean, they're a fluke as hope. Um, but I, I think they're certainly to play the eight. There you go. Oh, so the game we, we covered, the first final up in Newcastle um, last year, mm. one of the great games against the understrength Raiders yeah. on that magnificent afternoon. When the crowd went nuts and Young was running down the wing and everyone stood as one, Andrew John said it's the greatest moment he's seen at Newcastle. Well, have a guess. It? Have a guess what our first game is. What? Back here. At, sorry, we've obviously got this game in um, Las Vegas. But Thursday, so eight days' time, mm-hmm. it's Newcastle versus Canberra on Thursday night. Up in Newcastle, we'll have the full team there on the ground, as we always do, covering all the action, and it's going to be a rematch. Wonderful. The Raiders. The Raiders in prime time. Lovely. And they were understrengthened for that game too, Gus. But they they aimed right up. They did. It was a credit to them and the club. Great way to start the comp. North Queensland Cowboys. My tip to win the comp last year. How'd that pan out? Uh, not that great. Um, they are such a strong side. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you made you made a point of saying did they did they put in the effort throughout last off season as they did the year before under the coaching of Todd Payton. Now as far as uh, acquisitions go North Queensland. Viliami uh, Valaya, who I know you got a rap on outside back. I think you might have got him to the Warriors. Uh, and Thomas McKayley, the former Giant Tiger. Now they've 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 lost a few. Mitch Dunn retired. He was a good player, Mitch Dunn, but he kept getting injured. Brendan Elliott released. Ben Hampton released. Peter Hickey has gone to England. Riley Price has gone to Penrith. The game at Shibasaki released. And James Tamo retired. But they do have that. Uh, well, the other one they picked up, of course, is Jake Clifford, who's come back to the club from England. They've got that glut of forwards coming through. Yeah, they have, and they've had to make some salary cap decisions there um, because I think Helam Lukey, um, it was kind of expected he might take a big offer to go elsewhere to the Dragons or to the Dolphins. Helam Lukey had an, an option in his own favour to stay with the club and has elected to stay, Ooh. Uh, which I don't think they thought was going to happen. That would put a lot of pressure on this Kula Kefu. Kula Kefi Fuyaki. That's him, uh, who's an outstanding young talent. 
and um, you know, he's probably on a, a much smaller contract than what he could get somewhere else. They'd have to upgrade him to keep him, but they didn't have that sort of money available. And particularly after Hill and Lukey took up his option to stay, now, right. Hill, Hill and Lukey decided not to go, which has meant they've had to move Luciano Leilua, um, who was one of their big money purchases a couple of years ago. Luciano was on pretty good money up there. He's a good player. $900,000. He's a good player. I don't think he was on that much up there, but with the opportunity to move clubs and test the market and the way the market is at the moment, because there's no players on the market, um, he was able to... Uh, Sorry, so the nine hundred thousand. You think he's he's gone to the dragons on that salary? Nine hundred thousand. It's a big dick, big ticket, isn't it? Crikey, he's a good player. He was at the he was at the dragons. He's, he's a dragons junior. Yeah, he was at the dragons, and they let him go to the tigers, and then he he got scouted to go to North Queensland. And he's a dangerous player. I think he's a good player. So he want to be. <laughs> but they've made a decision up there that you know they've got Helam Lukey, they've got this young Kula Kefu coming through, and mm. they've managed to keep him. Um, still got Jason Tomalolo there on big contract. They've got Jeremiah Nanai. I mean, I don't know where they're going to fit them all in. Uh, yeah, and Ruben Cotter. He's just been made co captain. Yeah, who sprouted wings over the last couple of years uh, as a front rower. Reese Robson's now playing Origin football. It's a good side, isn't it? It is a good side. What was the uh, diagnosis on Cohen Hess with his knee injury? Uh, I don't know. Stand by. I was a little worried about that on the weekend because he left the field. They've got a really good another forward there in, in Griffin Neem, who I've got a big rap on. Um, Jake Granville's still going around with the club. Jordan McLean's still going around with the club. It's a hell of a side. Um, you know, last year was disappointing for them, particularly after the way they played in 2022. Valentine Holmes is still there. Um, Drink water. Tom Dearden's decided to stay with the club, and that would have put more pressure on their on their salary cap. Scott Drinkwater would have been upgraded and I think significantly upgraded. So it's a powerful looking roster uh, and I think they've got a great chance. Um, 22 was a wonderful year for them. They just didn't come up in 23, particularly the first half of 23. They threatened to get back in it but then didn't. Um, so it's hard. If you give away a big start, it's hard to maintain the rage all the way to the finals at that stage of the year, and they just never really got on the right leg. But if they start on the right leg this year, um, they've got the the player talent to certainly be a top eight contender. Mm. Absolutely. That's as far as you're going to go with them. Yeah, top eight contender. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't, um, I don't, I don't know that they've got the premiership X factor. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that they've got that at the moment, but. Um, Where is their X factor? They're certainly a top eight contender. Well, Tommy Dearden's sort of taken over the major. He and Scott Drinkwater produced most of the tries. Valentine Holmes, mm. is, you know, he's brilliant. He's playing in the centres. Uh, they've got that brilliant back. So, I mean, it, it all depends on, as I said, injuries. Well, who is at full strength? If they're at full strength and others are weaker, well, they can certainly make a deep run in the finals. I, I think they'll play finals football. Yeah, okay. But I'm, I'm not suggesting premiership at this stage. All right. So, uh, top eight. With a watch, perhaps, uh, for the Cowboys, Parramatta. Grand finalists are missing the eight. And gee, the coach is under pressure. I mean, if, if, they, don't, if they miss the eight again. How's he under pressure? No, no. Well, sorry. He will be under pressure if they miss the finals again. Where are you going to get another coach? Wayne Bennett will be available. Wayne Bennett at Parramatta? I don't think so. I'm not going to see that happening. Really? No, I don't see that happening. Oh, I could. No, I don't see that. Um, they'll put Wayne Bennett in charge of whoever they name the next franchise. That's what they'll do. Oh, okay. They picked up Morgan Harper from Manly. They got Kelma Tuolangi also from Manly. So they've had a bit mm-hmm. of a raid there. Uh, Wonga Blake got into the Super League. Uh, Andrew Davey, that poor lad, debuted, I think, at 28. Uh, kept getting injured. They had to retire. Josh Hodgson, another one. Um, and they lost a couple of others as well, fringe first graders. But uh, clearly... Gutho and Brown and Moses and the other big names have to stand up this year. Very impressive on the weekend. I mean, it's only trial form and you shouldn't put too much into it, but they certainly blew the Titans off the park and I was expecting a lot more from the Titans this year. Um, it is a trial, I get it. I think Jermaine Hopgood's been a wonderful buy for them and he's mm. really sitting in there. They've got the two great front rowers in Regan Campbell-Gillard and Junior Borlo up front there and they're always... Um, a handful for any team that they play again. They played last year without the big tall back rower, Sean Lane. Yep. Uh, who's back and looks as though he's 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 back and ready. 
Um, yeah, and they've got the two representative class halves and the representative class fullback. So they've got a lot of the ingredients, have they? They've probably struggled in the dummy half role since Reed Marnie left the club. Um, they did get Josh Hodgson, but he's had to retire through injury or repeated injury. Um, they brought Lussick back from England last year. Yeah, who's a tidy player. Joey's, there's nothing wrong with Joey. He's a tidy player. Um, yeah, they'll be hurting, and they look as though they've done the work. They look as though that last year stung them a little bit and missing the eight. I don't think anyone anticipated at the start of the year that that was a possibility, but they managed to miss the eight, and I'm expecting a big bounce-back factor with them. Um, whether they've got the depth in outside backs, if they've got a couple of injuries, that could trouble them. Their, their mainstays are, are good, and they can certainly finish off and score tries and save tries. Terrific forward pack, great halves, terrific fullback, competitive fullback, good leadership, good coach. Um, yeah, they'll be hard to play, hard to beat every time they play. But uh, they won't want too many injuries in key positions. Okay, yes. Which is 90% of the clubs in the league. Well, their season was done when Dylan Brown got rubbed out last year, wasn't it? Well, it certainly coincided. You know, the, the, the fall from grace coincided with him not being there. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, the problem is they just didn't have a replacement for him. Uh, and it left, left too much pressure on uh, Mitchell Moses. Um, really pleased with the way Bryce Cartwright's bounced back in his career. Yeah. Uh, he looked good on the weekend, scored a try, set one up. He's, he's always been a talent. Uh, his head's clear now and playing him really well. I like Bailey Simonson and Panasini in the centres. I think they're, they're really solid players. Uh, Make a Sebo, of course. He's out suspended, is he, for the first couple of first few weeks? Yeah. Uh, Joe Off and Gowie. Yeah, you know, they've got. Yeah, it's a good side. Ryan Madison. Um, Hayes Dunster missed a lot of last year. Yes, he's he back did. from the knee, so he'll probably yeah. replace Sebo for the first few weeks. Probably. They're a solid lineup. But, so you're saying. Uh, every chance of playing finals, but like most clubs, if they get battered around with injury, it might be a struggle. Yeah, I, I think, you know, somewhere between five and ten, I think, is their position. I don't think they'll be too far away from those positions at the back end of the year. And, and I'm expecting that part of the competition to be really tight. So it'll just come down to a few results here and there. All right. Two of the great game's most iconic clubs. Glory, glory to South Sydney. What to expect from Souths. Sean Kepi, along with Jack Whiten, have joined the club. No Blake Taff, he's off to Canterbury. Well, in fact, he started at Canterbury. Harmay Sele, Dragons, Jed Cartwright, as we mentioned, to Newcastle. Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker, the two absolute linchpins. I say Walker's going to be okay to play uh, over in Vegas, first up um, against Manly. But they have lost... Uh, Campbell Graham for uh, for an extended period, Gus. Now I know they they do have Whiten there, which kind of offsets it. Although they probably play on different sides, but he's a, he's a significant loss, Campbell Graham, and absolutely. their backline looks a bit stripped for this this early part of the year. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you can't afford, you know, particularly in the salary cap, the way it is these days, and what players are being paid. You can't afford a player like you know, Campbell Graham to be missing for an extended period of time. Hopefully they hold their end up until he gets there. I think he'll be back mid season. They're saying, but. Uh, certainly a really good player. They've got a workman like Packer Forge without anything too dominating. Um, I'll be really interested to see how Jack Whiten's career at the back end of this career, how it evolves. I know they've said they've bought him as a left centre. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he morphs into a lock forward, even a back rower mm. at some stage between now and, and retirement age. Um, Latrell Mitchell and Katie Walker are obviously the keys to this machine and, and what they can do. And if both are on, well, they're always extremely hard to beat. Probably don't see um, probably don't see the dominance in the forward pack that we've we've known for some years. Um, Daniel Saluka Fafida is out injured. Uh, Hame Seller has gone. Both were really good tradesmen for them. Well, uh, do you want me to give you the team for this week? Uh, Mitchell. Obviously, Johnston, Tass, and Kenner in the centres. Now, Jacob Gagai is the other winger, so you can see that they're a little and white and suspended for this first game. Well, they were lucky because Jacob Gagai was nearly suspended, but he managed to get off at the New South Wales Rugby League Judiciary. Walker, Ilias, then Totola, Cook, Kepi, Kaloa Matangi, who's an origin player, now Arrow Murray, good back row. Yeah. Uh, Havili, Host, Moale, and Burgess. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in additional uh, reserves, mm. Talis Duncan. 
Good prospect, Cheekam, Shaq Mitchell. So that's that's their squad they're, for Vegas. They're tradesmen like, and then you know they've got to bounce back too because they were disappointing last year. I think Jack White and is a huge buy. I mean, it's a massive buy for them. I'm just wondering whether they can afford, if as they say, to play him in the centres. I, I don't know. I think he's going to need to be closer to the action. A lot of pressure on the halfback. A lot of the South Sydney fans I know aren't all that happy with the way he's been going, Lachlan Ilias. Why? Well, I don't know. They just say that they just don't think he's the right man to play there. A lot of, that's what a lot of South fans have been saying. Well, who would they want instead? Well, I don't know. Well, I think they want a Blake Taff. <laughs> you took him. I think he's. I think he's all right. Lachlan Ilias. I, I think he's... Well, what I'm getting at is Cody Walker's the key to it. Cody Walker, Walker and Latrell. Mm. You know, I mean, and if, if if they can afford to keep playing Jack White in the centres, well, then everyone must be doing their job and going well. I just got a feeling that before his career is over, Jack White and will be developing into a left side back row forward or a lock forward. Yeah. I, I think he'll be closer to the action, particularly in club football, not so much rep football. Rep football, he's a perfect left centre, but in club football, they're going to need him closer to the action, I think, at some stage. What are you forecasting for South? I mean, the, 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 the... You pretty much through. the same. Pretty much the same as Parramatta. Yeah. Somewhere they they could finish fourth. They could finish tenth. You know, it's that's how close that part of the competition that is really going to be. Is. Mm. All right. That's uh, there's not much more you can say. Really, we'll see how they go on the weekend. What about the Red V? Now, Billy Slater in his podcast, um, which is remarkably called the Billy Slater podcast, mentioned that the Dragons can make the eight. Mm-hmm. You think Shane Flanagan can turn them uh, into? Uh, a finals-like outfit. Now, Corey Allen, well, he's signed, but he's done for the year with the with the knee. Poor bloke. Yep. Uh, Tom Eisenhuth, Raymond Faitala, Mariner, Kyle Flanagan, Jesse Marshke. He went good for them in the first job. Harme Sello, good signing. He's another one that started with the Dragons. Christian Tui Pilotu, and you can add to that list that I've got Luciano Leilua. So they, they've gone shopping. Yeah, they bought, uh, they bought a lot of players. Bought well. They're all... Um, Jesse Maskey is inter- interesting because he played with the Bears in the um, uh, New South Wales Cup last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made the grand final. But Jason Taylor, who coached that side, had a big rap on him. said he's a real dangerous player, tradesman type player. He can fill in in the halves. So that's a good pick up there. Hame Seller went good for South Sydney. Luciano Leilua, uh, obviously, is now coming into the side, which gives him a bit of impact. I've, I've been saying every year, yeah. people have been saying the Dragons are no good, and I said they are. The Dragons have got a good roster, really good roster, some really experienced, hard, big men. Um, you know, I could never understand why they were going as poorly as they were. And even this year, I was surprised with their first trial against South Sydney. But, you know, the first 30 minutes, I thought, okay, th- this is going to be okay. And then they sort of fell apart. But then last week against the Tigers, they just ran rough shot over them. And I think they'll have that steely attitude. A lot of really strong, experienced Senior type players, and whatever you got, Ben Hunt, if he's you know his mind's on the job and his heart's in it, uh, which it normally is, um, he can create points for them. I mean, very very hard side to beat. You know, you, you, your Jack Birds and your Sulies and your Zach Lomaxes and those. They're all big, strong, hard men. The forward pack looks fit, Jack Bird. He does, you know, and he's probably you know Jack Bird's one of them blokes that's always wanted to be a lock forward or a five eight or whatever. Um, but he's played his best football as a centre. The coach has come in and said, no, you're playing centre, and that's just it. Don't talk to me about anything else. You know, he's moved Zach Lomax to the wing. Well, he's going to have a sook, but no, you're playing on the wing. You know, that's what you're going to do for the team. So He might get his hands on the ball more on the wing, Jack, uh, well, Zach Lomax. Wingers these days are touching the ball far more than centres. Yeah. Far more. They're kicking to them. And, he, and if you thought of playing him fullback, then there's no problem with him playing on the wing and returning the ball. He's a weapon with a cross kick. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, Terrell Sloan, who's obviously got great talent, um, but, you know, he's still got to mature physically and mentally into some of the, the parts of the game that he, he's not so good at at the moment. He's electric with the ball in hand in broken play, but in, you know, the tight hand-to-hand combat sort of stuff, he's, he's, he's still learning his trade. But if you've got those two big wingers, Rava Lara and Zach Lomax, getting back there and helping run back the ball for him and a little bit less pressure on that's part of the game for him. It frees him up to do other things. So I think that mm. it's a, it's mm. a good, strong exp- – and they're going to run roughshod physically over a number of teams in this competition. And they're all they're all seen, they're all durable blokes. I think – you know, people make something around. If they run last, I'll walk from Wollongong to Belmore for charity. They just won't run Have last. you got that, please? 
Very good. What's that? We've got that on tape. What did I say? <laughs> you never know. Well, it won't happen You're anyway. Welcome. It won't happen anyway. They won't run. I've, I've been saying it for years. They, they've got a good side. They've yeah, got I know a, that. They're in second last last year. No, I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know why. I can't answer you why. Well, one thing he will do, Flanagan, um, obviously he's a polarising figure, but he will bring them together. And he coaches in that physical way, doesn't he? He'll, he'll, he'll encourage those big physical guys to go out and play like that. Yeah, he'll, he's got big outside backs, which is what he had at the Sharks. He did a lot of the yardage work for them. He'll save his forwards up for the defence. He's got Ben Hunt there who can wheel the team around the field. He's got the X Factor in Terrell Sloan at fullback. Uh, Zach Lomax is a great goal kicker. You know, he's brought some Luciano Leilua. has got that little bit of X Factor with him as well. Um, bit of skill they're, in the They're edge. well covered. You know, I don't think injury is going to be a problem to them. I think Tom Eisenhuth is a player I've always liked. Come from the Melbourne Storm, brought a bit of leadership. And um, you're upbeat about the Dragons. I, I'm I, hearing I, more positivity about the Dragons than the other two I teams have we're been, just talking I about. I have been for several years. I could not understand why they performed the way they did. I just don't. And they, they're even stronger this year. So they'll be hard to beat whoever Let plays. Them. Who fifth, do they play fifth, in week one? Fifth to twelfth, they could finish. Who do they? Play? They'll um, be in that mix. Uh, I do know this. Um, it, I'm calling it actually on the radio. Titans up there. Yeah. Okay. Titans are dollar fifty favourite already. Mm-hmm. It's under the odds. All right. Gus. Uh, Gus likes the chances of St George of the Warrior again. I've got everyone finishing between fifth and twelve. Who would you put, who would you play fullback if you were coaching the Dragons? Terrell Sloan. You would. Yep. You wouldn't roll the dice on Lomax. No, I'm petrified of playing against Terrell Sloan. Okay. He, he's a player who scares opposition coaches, but you might get there's it. other parts of the game he's got to get right. You know, he's got to come to terms that sometimes this is hand to hand combat, and you've got to get physical with it. And not every time you get the ball, you're going to have a lot of room to move. You know, and at fullback, you're the last line of defence. You've got to treat the in goal like it's you know it's your property. You can't let him into there. It's but that's maturity. That's just coming up. And playing with all these senior players who won't tolerate any of the other rubbish. That's true, yeah. He's going to, you know, he's going to, um, he'll learn his trade very, very quickly, let me tell you. they got some good young kids. they got some outstanding young junior sides there at the moment, St. George and Illawarra. So hopefully they get that part of it right. But they they, they won't run last. You and if they you, do, you're walking, bro. I'll Wollongong walk, to Belmore. I'll walk from Wollongong to Belmore I'll for charity. I'll come with you. Yeah, for charity if they run last. <laughs> they won't be running last. It's a long walk, isn't it? I won't have to buy any new shoes. We're going to go up Picton Road? <laughs> or are we going to go up we're going to go Mount Oosley? I don't even know how to get there. <laughs> You've got to go to Mount Oosley with your hat. I'll wear, wear, wear my hat. All right, the Roosters. Now, let me just read the round one team to you. Tedesco, Tupo, Smith, Manu, Swali'i, Kiri Walker. Len you to start. Smith, Collins, Siwa Wong, Satili Tupanua, Victor Radley. On the bench, Sandon Smith, Nafahu White. Nat Butcher, who started pretty much every game last year, and Terrell May. There's no spot for Angus Crichton. There's no spot for Egan Butcher. There's no spot for Connor Watson. Yeah. And Dom Young's not available. Nor is Jared. Nor is Jared Maria Hargreaves. I mean, fair dinkum. It's a roster, isn't it? <laughs> you, should, you should tell your joke. That's you, a roster. You, you should tell your joke again about who you'd recruit from the Roosters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a roster. I... I I'm so, like- so Angus Crichton, Egan Butcher, Connor Watson can't make the seven. <laughs> Please, Jared Warrior and Dominic Young, <laughs> unavailable. Un- un- unavailable. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> they've just re- they've just extended Luke Carey. They've just re-signed him. Yeah, it's, it's, what, it's, are you, it's, what are you saying? It's a good side. You're a good side. It's a good side. They just re-signed Angus Crichton. It's he a was good side. Going to go to rugby. It's a good side. Like, like, one stage last year, they looked like missing the eight. Like yeah. they were tipped to be premiership. I, I think I tipped them to be. Up there towards the Premier, but they they just it was terrible what happened to them. And I, and yeah, you know, back end of the year they forced their way in. A few sides fell over for them, but they were never going to win it. Um, they were never going to win it. And you know, I don't know. I, it, it's a great looking team. It's got a second to none chance. It's a great looking team. I'll tell you what these these two blokes bring is speed. Young and Lenu with, with, well, his, with his mobility in the, in the middle. They, they, they look very slow at times last year. Be interesting to see how Spencer goes starting. He's, his big impact mm. has been at Penrith coming off the bench. Uh, obviously, they've had uh, James Fisher Harris, Moses Leota, and uh, Liam Martin and Asaya Yo in the forward pack go out and do all the bullocking work early. And then Spencer comes off in little short stints and does what he does. 
on the couple of occasions where he has started for Panthers, um, his burnout rate has been pretty quick. So he would have had to have worked really hard on that if he wants to be a starter. And I'm not saying he can't be, but it, it hasn't been in his makeup to date. Um, it'll be I, interesting I, to see. I reckon. It'll be interesting to see what he weighs and how they've trained him and how he looks when he runs out to start this game. So Spencer Lenu. He's actually explosive. Sorry, Gus. He has played 84 first grade games. He started mm. three times. Mm. Yeah. That's all. So this is this about his fourth start in the game. Would he be just keeping JWH's spot warm? Well, I think originally he was bought to replace JWH. Now, JWH has somehow extended his contract for another year because I think he's in line to break the game played record. Yeah, he's 298. 298. So he wants, you know, I think, what's the record at the Roosters? About 308 or 309 yeah, or something? Uh, yes, Mitch Orbison, isn't it? Yeah, so I think he's in line to do that, which is why they backed him up again. Um but he'll come in and he'll come back and start and lend you to the bench, you'd think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and then they miss and another one misses out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's an expensive <laughs> bench, isn't it? Um, and they've got Terrell May. He's, he's turned into a beautiful – well, he was outstanding last year, wasn't he? Yeah. So it's it's a hell of a side, a hell of a side. Dominic Young and, and Daniel Tupou, probably the two of the best finishing wingers or two of the best finishing wingers in the game. They're tall too. They're kick targets. They're kick defenders. They're fast, they save tries, they score tries, they do a lot of work off the ball. It's a working man's forward pack, Joey Manu, and he's, um, we know what he can do. It's an incredible team, incredible roster. They're in with a chance. Victor, the inflictor. I'd want to be. Yeah, well, it's, it's a hell of a roster. Angus Crichton, Egan Butcher, Connor Watson, Jerry Hargreaves and Dominic Young aren't in the team. This one. Top four? Uh, obviously, they're, you know, they're a top four roster. Lastly, on our season preview, part two, it's been going for weeks, the West Tigers, Gus. Right. With Coach Benji Marshall in the hot seat. Uh, he, he, <laughs> it wasn't taking him too long to realise this mightn't be as easy as he thinks. On the weekend, they got flogged. Well, coaching never is easy. They're no, only no. trials. Of course. They're only trials. All right, let's have a look at the West Tiger. Now, I honestly, I, I hope, hope beyond hope, that for all the fans out there, that they can just go better. Um, for Tape played on the weekend. Uh, now, these La, the, Latu Fainu and um, Samuela Fainu, the two that they signed from Manly, there's obviously high hopes for both of them. Justin Ollum, Aidan Caesar, Jaden Sullivan. So they have picked up some, and of course, uh, Jerome Luai is the big one for next year. But for this year, uh, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? What, what, what does a West Tigers team coached by Benji Marshall look like, I wonder? Yeah, well, I think... I think um... They've shown some really good form at different times in different games, you know. But when you're at the bottom, it's hard to maintain it. If you get a few injuries, it's hard to compete with the top sides. Now, like the other teams at the bottom of the ladder, they've had some terrible results during the year. I mean, some big score lines run up upon. So it's about eliminating those from your from your repertoire. You know, cutting down the difference between your best and your worst, being a little bit more consistent from week to week, finding points. You, you need points to give your team encouragement because if you haven't got points in you and you get behind the better sides, and they can become very dispirited very, very quickly. I never find West Tigers to be too dispirited. They seem to be able to bounce back okay from those sort of things. Um, great leadership in Appy Coruscant mm. um, and David Clemmer. Look, it's, it, it's just the part of the cycle that they're in. They've got a lot of really talented young players. Uh, Jareem Buller, Stefano Atukamano, uh, Taylor De Silva, who's very, very young, but he obviously shows potential. Junior Tupo, I think it's a shame that they've lost him for next year, uh, but he can certainly help them this year. Uh, Jaden Sullivan is a player with potential. Um, they've bought potential in their halves, and they've also about an old-timer in, in Aiden Caesar there to help them around. Adam Dewey, we'll see, have to see how he comes back from his injury. Um, he's had what, mm. three reconstructions now in the same leg, so that's going to be difficult for him. Uh, I thought Caesar's... I like Fanua Poli. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, just his kicking. Um, he's he's a renowned kicker, isn't he, Caesar? So that that gives them left foot kicking game down. Left he's got control. He's got experience yeah. and he's got control. He's got experience and control. You know, obviously the the longer term plan is Jerome Luai, mm. and I think with Jerome Luai, will that will attract other players mm. uh, to the club as well. It's a big purchase for them, but that's next year. Um, 
And that's why young Lachlan Galvin, who I think is really an NRL player and even a representative class player of the future, they just need to be careful not to let the current needs over, you know, over, over weigh the, the long-term development of a very talented player. I, I would hate to see him rushed too much and too often into that position. Um, and he's certainly not there to save them, uh, but to develop him properly over a period of time, they need to take their time with him. Um, very, very different if he's with a much stronger team and a much stronger club. Uh, if you're playing with the Panthers or you're playing with Melbourne, they're able to blood those fellas and look after them, uh, where at times it can get, you know, for the teams at the bottom when you're having those days where you're getting beaten by 40 and 50, it can be a very harrowing experience for them out there. Uh, West Tigers, I think, have been on this development train for a while now. I think, you know, um, punk fans have just got to be patient. The Fainu brothers, uh, Latu and Samuela, are talented players. One's a 5'8", the other one's a, a front row, second row type player. Uh, you know, they're going to take time. They're, they're still 18 months away from any regular first grade, I would think, uh, where they're actually influencing results. A lot of those players are like that. Um, they'll have their wins. Um, they're going to have some tough times and they've just got to grit their teeth until uh, they all get a little bit more experience and, you know, Jerome Luai turns up next year and go from there. They did pick up, you know, Justin Olam, who was a nice experienced player out in the back line. Um, well, they win more than last year? I mean, they win. How many? Four, four or five or something. Four or five? Yeah. It's hard in this competition, mate. They, the, the bottom teams, it's hard. It's hard work for them to get out of that cellar. Um, I, 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 I don't see top eight. No. Um, but it's an important year for the club to stick together and to get behind Benji and help these young fellas. And, you know, in the difficult weeks particularly, it's going to put a lot of pressure on their, their, their senior players, your David Clemmers and your Abby Corusows and those players, the Sia Papalatis. They, they've, got to, they've got to really help them. Um, John Bateman, the, the Englishman, they've really got to be playing every week and help them through. Um, what they're about to go. It's 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 hard for teams in the Salomon. It's hard. It's honestly it's hard, um, and it's going to be tough. But um, they've got good kids coming, and they've got a superstar coming next year. So uh, they've just got to grit their teeth, bite down on the mouth guard, and get it done this year. Jeez, I don't like that. What? I don't, like, I don't like. I don't like that. Don't what do you like want to say? I don't what? know. I was hoping you'd say. Well, there's a few. They're going to go a lot better. A few of us are in the same position. Well, oh, no, yeah, you no. can. You can. I feel I'm not going to sugarcoat the bitter pill. No, no. But it's going to be hard for them. Yeah. You know. Now they might jump out of the box and 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 do. And and last year they had some great. They beat Penrith at Bathurst last year. I mean, they've got that one in them. Every team's got that one game in them. Yeah, but they got beat by seventy. Like oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's going. <laughs> that's what's going. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Your bad days can be really bad. You know, they've got to cut down the difference between their best and their worst to be a little bit more consistent, give themselves a little bit more confidence. Some great young kids there, though. There, there are some terrific young kids there, and they've just got to make sure that the difficulty they're going through is part of the growing process and doesn't actually go the other way and uh, dispirit them too much. You know, they're, they're, but they seem like a resilient group, the Tigers. I don't no, – I like watching the Tigers. I always like watching them play. Go the Tigers, and I like Benji. Good luck, Benj. The game needs them needs them firing and, and, and going better. Have we done every team now? We've done every team three times. Uh, let's have a look at the two games coming to kickstart the premiership this weekend. Roosters Broncos, the big one that you'll see live and free here on nine three thirty kickoff Sunday afternoon. I mentioned the Roosters team. I should give you the Broncos team, which is pretty impressive in itself. I'm trying to look it up here. They have lost a few, though. So Walsh is fullback. Arthurs and Mariner play on the wing. Uh, obviously, um, with no Herbie Farnworth, they've decided to move Selwyn Cobbo into the centres to partner Katoni Staggs. Ezra Mam, grand final superstar, and Adam Reynolds um, in the halves. He's a, if it wasn't for Nathan Cleary, he'd have won the Clough Church with medal, is a man. Uh, Corey Jensen, Billy Walters, Payne Haas, Brendan Piakura replaces Kurt Capel, Jordan Ricky, Pat Carrigan. It's Smoothie Fletcher Baker they picked up from the Roosters, Kobe Hetherington and Xavier Willison. That's their side. Yep. Yep. Uh, th they've lost a couple of key players. Mm. So, um, but they've certainly got some brilliant talent around that. Uh, 
This is a, this is a difficult one. This is a difficult one. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how Selwyn Cobbo goes in the centres mm. and how that helps them or even serves them defensively. Katani Staggs, I've always been an admirer of. They've got the good halves, Ezra Mim and, and Reynolds. Um, I think the Fleglers are lost in the forward pack. They've got a couple of young, they've got young Brenda Pakura, and who's a big boy. Corey Jensen starting in the front row. Um, Speaking of big boys, that Willison on the bench, we saw him in the All Stars game. He's a giant. Yes, yes, yes. Rooster, Rooster, Rooster. It's a good side, isn't it? It's a good side. The field's a little bit narrower. Who will like the bright lights of Las Vegas? I think Reese Walsh will excel. Hollywood Reese Walsh. I think he'll excel on the big stage over there. A few people saying that the uh, NFL scouts are going to have a look at him and they want him. Are they? That's what, that's what that's I've been reading. Good luck with that. <laughs> Where's he going to play That's what the, I've been reading. Where's he going to play in the NFL? Isn't there some rubbish that you read? <laughs> My God. They'd eat, they'd eat Reese Walsh at the breakfast buffet. Mm. Yeah, look. I, I, I Good start, eh? Good start of the year. It is a really good start to this year. Um, I'm going to go Bronco. Bronco to win. Mm-hmm. Narrowly. All right, and then the first of the games, of course, uh, one thirty kickoff between Manly. She's very confident in Manly this year. Up against Souths, uh, I mentioned those those losses in the back line. So Souths, you know, Tass has been a regular, but Ken has played very little first grade uh, recently, and Gagai's played very little first grade at all. Up against this uh, shiny Manly outfit, which will be spearheaded at the back by Tom Trebojevic and Brooks. He's been over there on barbecue duty, so they're all ready to go. Yeah, I think Manly win this one. I really do. Um, I think that's a pretty comfortable selection this week. I'm very confident with Manly. Okay. Not so confident with the Bronco, but I think they'll win. But I do think Seagull beats Rabbit this week. All right. Very good. Uh, we've got a whole range of games to look at next week. Good to be back with you, Gus. We you whack your hat on and head on down to the uh, the reunion. I'm going down to the uh, what do they call it? The Woolly Wollam- Hotel, Woolamaloo Bay Hotel, Woolamaloo Bay Hotel. And what I, I should I we should have mentioned too. 1988 was your first year as a first grade coach. You're part of a very select group. Yeah, yeah. long Sorry. time ago, mate. It's 36 years ago now. Who else is there? Ricky Stewart. That's probably it? why my missus bought me a hat. Michael Hagen, coach. First, first year. Andrew Farrah coached. I'm talking about premiership winners in their first years. In their first year? Yeah. Ricky did it. Ricky did it. Trent Robinson did it. Trent Robinson did it. Uh, Leo Nolesworthy. Nolesworthy. Yeah, back in the early days of Elmo. Wasn't many. And the great Gussie. Uh, That's Six Tackles with Gus for this week. We are covering all the action. We'll have a team on the ground in Las Vegas. And then, of course, uh, it all kicks off. In a proper sense, the week following will be in Newcastle for uh, the Knights versus Canberra, but Roosters Broncos 3.30 kickoff on Sunday. Footy, see you next week.